Nice. Unrelated question to anything we did musically, but I, I just my brain because when, when we stop there, there's like um, a kind of a performative, a performative ritual of communicating. Stop. Like as performers, we kind of like done. We can kind of communicate that, and I sort of picture pianists having a very um, full-bodied version of that because well, <laughs> we often see you sideways. So like like pianists very much kind of communicate doneness. You know, it just, I don't know, it was, uh, mm. kind of a side tangent thing there. Um, but yeah, a more earnest question. <laughs> with, with piano, I was just thinking now because with guitar, you know, you mess around with the tuning quite a bit. And this may not be the case because you play with preparations quite a lot, but usually as a pianist, C is C and F is F. Like, like yeah. w w the, the interface doesn't change very much. Uh, obviously, once you start putting preparation, that changes. Like, does that change your, um, like, psychogeographic image of like the keyboard and the bed and the like what happens in your brain when like C is no longer C because mm. there's a bolt in it like what what happens up top um I think what happens is in, it's <clears throat> in the very light way I've set up for today I suppose I, I section off parts of the keyboard so it becomes little little clusters of sound making areas if you see what I mean so I've kind of gone for this like little heavy kind of middle bass clef sort of range here with like quite a lot of the wedges so that's kind of like that range but when you sort of cluster them on top of each other you end up with quite a rich like little repertoire of sounds there mm. so rather than that just being a muted area of the keyboard that I kind of know it's more like it's this slightly hodgepodge mix of certain tone like you know a, a certain timbre that I kind of know what it's going to do but it's just because of the way the, these wedges work and just by moving them centimeter either way you can get you can just get completely different sounds so I suppose what I do is I yeah like certainly today it's like I kind of region off things and I try and I try not to think too hard about what I want to uh like what I want to definitely include hmm. and more just sort of semi-spontaneously kind of say all right I'll set that up I'll put a wooden thing there I know I've got this area if I want it and then a couple of tools. And then when it goes to it, it's like either kind of hone in on something or, or not, I suppose. So I suppose it's kind of like, I see it as lots of little instruments rather than one, one instrument, hmm. if that makes sense. And yeah. do you tend to sort of stick to certain, because I guess because string length and, and accessibility and, and proximity to, you know, like, do you tend to use certain ranges in a certain way? Like, do you tend to go for that low mid range for the rubbery type sounds and higher up for metally type sounds? Or do you, mm. m like, I don't know, like. Yeah, it's, I suppose it's, it's a vibration thing. So like down here, you just get more vibrations. Mm. So you're just going to have like more wobble. And so when you put something on the string there, um, again, you get like a, it's like the spectrum of the sound is bigger because of the, that wobble. Whereas up here, it just becomes very sort of reduced. This stuff works up here as well, but like just less effectively. It's like yeah, yeah. a much smaller spectrum of sound. So I suppose there's that. Um, and I think as well with um, me, I orientate around here because I think of, um, of it in like an embodied way as well so I think I sort of like the way I'm sitting at the instrument and I think with improvising you you very much kind of like I personally feel like it, it becomes a very rich embodiment of the sounds and so I guess I sort of orientate towards this kind of area hmm. and I mean, does that have any direct like do you tend to set up a breaking point on the key bed like like where 
because obviously inside there's like the metal braces that like it makes it prohibitive to do a certain thing past a certain point or you have to kind of give us a, a gap and like mm. does that call oh, well I actually don't know if that, that always corresponds with the same note on the piano but do you know with like the preparation that you've done now like if you're not looking at it do you know at what point the that region starts yeah, B below mid, B below C. Like, is, yeah. is that like a go-to thing? I don't know. Thing? Yeah, I don't because I like that mm. semitone, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And then I maybe give myself an extra one just in case I spell <laughs> over. I don't know, but yeah, there's something about the B. Yeah, yeah. But it because it's next to C. Yeah, yeah. So like, like basically, it's an octave at, at that C. It's like something different. Yeah. Yeah. Like from there up, rather. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, because I think like with a lot of this stuff, like there's the, the, the practicality of the physical instrument, like like there's an area that's easy for you to reach and then there's bars in the way that sort of prevent certain types of things. Mm. But then here, like, I guess th that conceptual thing of like, there's a fresh octave that will be a new sound. Mm -hmm. And do you do mm -hmm. a similar thing like near the, the upper end? Yeah, yeah. So up here would be, um, I'd probably, maybe, I mean, you can use your fingers at any point as well. So I guess yeah, yeah. you have that mobility of it there. Um, up here, I could... I would maybe have a slightly different material, like yeah, small yeah. wood works up here well. Um, but again, I don't know. So I, I suppose that if we were to kind of be really specific about it, I could say, right, I'm just going to use this. And like, you know, and to sort of say, right, these two squares, yeah, yeah. something like this. Um, I think the other thing is as well, is it's like, how much do you want to keep yourself restricted or how much do you want to have all your options? Mm. And I think until some, I think some improvisers really like to kind of like go in with say like something that's quite restricting, because there's so much you could do, oh, yeah, yeah. you know. And it's like right, um, and I, I think I think I just didn't really know what I wanted to do today, and I, I ended up using a lot more sounds than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, that, that's a way. That, that's something, isn't it? I mean, do, do you do that? Do you yeah, like, for sure. I mean, like, particularly know? when you have a situation like this, like when there's a bag of tricks available yeah. and objects and preparations, like you, you can't do everything. I mean, I guess you can, but then that becomes a different kind of thing where you're like doing every sound once, yeah. you know, like because there's not enough time in the world for that. Um, but I think it's like finding things that gel or, or like here because we're both in sort of pitched and non-pitched spaces. Yeah. There's sort of like materials that we kind of clustered to a bit and then we kind of moved over here a bit. Um, so there's some like collective movement between our respective timbre spaces or whatever. Yeah. Um, but when setting things up, like I, I set up something for the first one and then like, like 30 seconds and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not. And then yeah. sort of like took it out and moved on just because it wasn't, it wasn't the vibe of what I wanted there. Yeah. Um, I guess that's a little trickier with some of the more inset preparations on piano. It depends. Like it'd be, it'd be quite noisy if you started pulling all of those out, for example. Mm. That might be a thing in and of itself though. But, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I, I, I think I quite like to just sort of like instinctively go. And I suppose it does come, I think it comes back to, to the sound. I think the reason I, I end up sitting here as well is because a big, big part of what I like to do is control the pedal. Oh, yeah. And it's like, um, you know, to kind of go around there, it's like, mm, it's quite a risk because I suddenly lose like a lot of my impact or whatever it is, you know, a lot yeah. of my sort of like sound aspect is, is gone. And I, and I so I weigh up how much do I want to be near the pedal? Um, and then, you know, the, the middle pedal as well. So I don't know, it's, yeah, I feel like you end up being a little bit safe sat here, but it's like the, the, a big part of like my control is here. I'm surprised I've never seen, I mean, I'm sure somebody has done this, but like a little pedal extension where you just have like a second pedal over here that's just like a little lever that yeah. pushes the, for the sustain, uh, sustains pedal specifically, just where you can have one over here and then it means you can, because it would be a bit like, I've not done a ton of inside the piano prepared improv stuff, but like, yeah, the pedal is gigantic because all the metal yeah. sound, like everything is, sounds hugely different. Yep. And when you're over here, obviously that goes away, but it would be really interesting to be able to pedal as comfortably as you can over there, mm -hmm. but just having access to this part yeah it would be quite a quite a cool i think thing. that yeah it would be great i mean you can you can put like a wedge on it or something yeah although that then, then becomes its own separate thing yeah it's, it's just down all the time and you're like mm. yeah yeah <laughs> i guess you could individually lift dappers but yeah that starts getting a little dangerous yeah <laughs> well i'll just do it through you the keys i suppose yeah i guess so, yeah um hmm yeah because i love these 
They oh, yeah, sound yeah. so cool. Yeah, and the geometry of, of the inside of the piano is such a different thing from the key bed. Like, because it's such a like, it's so, well, it's not symmetrical, but it's like this, you know, this rectangle of, of like all these little, you know, smaller rectangles. Whereas inside there's a, it's, it's a the completely different consideration. It's just angles and, and forces that need to be braced in those little holes for the, the, the sound vibration. Like, it, it's such an interesting topology inside here mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. makes for very, very different playing in the way that like a sax player, a flute player, there's all these like mechanical things that are required in order to make these sounds, which mm -hmm. now become part of like a, a physical language, which then carries on to like repertoire. On mm -hmm. the piano, it's sort of this part is kind of boring and repetitive in, in terms of like the repeats octaves and obviously things change, but the, the, the funny requirements of what needs to happen in here would produce these variations where like mm. this area is for this, this area is for this. You kind of reach over here and you can do these things and you have to do these workarounds to negotiate um, the face of the, the instrument. It mm. works really well, I think, for this, this video too because people can't see the inside of the piano or maybe they can from the reflection a bit. But that's, that's yeah. typically what, what the piano is. It's like this opaque, often, well, not often, but like sometimes completely closed box, yeah. like black box that you can't see inside. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you ever do the prepared stuff with lid off completely? Mm. Do you have a preference? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess that is like no, I don't. I think I think lid up, lid on, lid on, lid on, and lid up. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's. Just well, we're used to this sound, sound. as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like God. We have I've done that before when I've done like two piano stuff. Mm. That's cool. And then so one's got a lid on, but the other one doesn't. And it yeah. like reflects both. And I suppose, yeah, like being able to get around here is, has been useful for a few mm. things. It's quite nice having multiple people around, isn't it? Like yeah, you can yeah. all kind of like stand in a little row going around. Mm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah. I think I was, what I was pleased about was the fact that it, I think sometimes I think the piano can just be loud and it's like such a loud instrument and, um, I think to be able to bring out these tiny little bits of the mechanism, like the, the tiny strings and the tiny, um, the tiny nuts, is actually, it's just this little tiny aspect of it that I, that I personally like to kind of like dwell in mm -hmm. a little bit more, rather than it just being this big. Less of the forte. Yeah, the piano. just more of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, shall we play a bit more?
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.